Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to learn the functionality of the custom tab and custom button within the snappy WYSIWYG editor. The benefit of the custom functions in the WYSIWYG editor is that it allows you to have full control over the user interface of your mobile app. You certainly have a number of functions within Snappy that allow you to control how your app looks and behaves with images, HTML capabilities, and many drag and drop features. But the custom button and the custom tab provide you with the most flexibility of all functions. When you're utilizing a tab in Snappy, typically whatever the tab is assigned to, for example, an advanced list, when you drop that tab, down onto the tab bar, as I've just done here, you can see that it opens up functionalities specifically related to an advanced list. Because this is a tab, the only thing that I can do within this tab is utilize advanced list functionalities. That is true of all of the tabs that exist here, with the exception of the custom tab. The custom tab, when I drag and drop it down into the tab bar, opens up a completely blank screen or page in my app and I have full flexibility in what I do with this page from there. So for example if I want to create a contact us screen I'm just going to name it contact and the title is what you see up here in the app so this is what the user sees and if there were layers of information or screens underneath this particular screen then when I saw the little arrow up here when I was utilizing my app that allows me to go backwards it will show me the title of the tab that I'm going to be going to. It's also a great reference for you as the app builder to remember which tab you are on especially if your app is very robust and has a number of various screens or tabs within your app. You can also specify the icon for your tab. Clicking on the icon button you can choose from any number of pre-built icons or you can upload one from your computer. I'm just going to pick an icon, click OK. Now I'm ready to go utilizing my custom tab. So now that I have a custom tab, again, I've got complete flexibility to drag and drop whatever elements I want onto this tab. Since I've made this a contact page, I'm going to pull over my telephone functionality and I'm not going to uh, talk about configuring these specific elements in this video, although we do have videos available for you that talk about all of the features and functionality that you see me dragging over here. So I'm dragging all of these items over here, and as you can see, I have the ability to put them anywhere I want on the screen, line them up, add any of these elements that I want. If I also wanted my users, for example, perhaps to be able to take a photo and submit it someplace, I can drop that in there as well. We can drop in text and make it say whatever we'd like here. And again, you have the availability of dropping however many text fields you would like within your app and in different areas. You can add in images, perhaps your logo, or any number of photos, and you have the ability to do that several ways. Again, we have a video online that specifically talks about how you can utilize the image element in different ways. And we're going to just change the information right here quickly so that you get to see how the images can appear on the screen for you. So there's the image we just selected. Again, this could be a logo, it could be several images in a row, perhaps you have a series of images that you want to present. Another way that you can use an image in your custom screen is actually as a background image. So the blue color that I have here is set here by default because of the color theme that I selected for my app. Whatever color theme I select is going to determine what my background color is. But if I wanted to be able to have an actual image going into the background of my screen instead of colors, I could do that. Now in this case, because I have already added elements and images into my app, I don't have the availability to go back in and add a background image now. So what I'm going to do in this case to show you how that functionality works is drop down another blank custom tab. Now I can pull over my image, do the same thing as I did before. In this case, I'm just going to pick one that exists on the web here 
and I'm going to make it go the full height and width of my screen. Now the height that you use will depend on what you want to have on your screen. If you only have a few elements on your screen, users are not going to need to scroll down the screen when it's on their device, and so your image doesn't necessarily need to be very high. But if you did need to make it higher because you had a number of elements or several items of text, you certainly can do that simply by changing that here. And then the width, by default, the widest you can go is 320 pixels. So we're going to do that in this case. Click OK. And now you can see that I have a background image that will take up my entire screen. Once I have my background image in place, I can then put various buttons and elements on top of my image, as I had done in the other screen when I did not have an image. It is the same process. I simply drag my items over that I want to utilize and place them wherever I would like. I do still have the opportunity to add text and also images on top of my background image. So in this case, we're just going to grab an image, click OK, and we're going to change it so that it actually shows on the screen. And as you can see here, that image goes right on top of the background image that is there. So this is truly a background image, and you can put any number of elements or layers of text on top of this. The other thing that you can do in a custom screen or a custom tab is add the custom button. So this button, again, you drag and drop over, just like you would with any other element or button in Snappy. Now, obviously, based on what it is that you want to have underneath this custom button would determine what you would call it. You have the availability to specify the icon of this button, so you can choose from a number of pre-built icons we have in our library, or upload one from your computer or find something on the web. I'm going to pick an image here and click OK. And now you can see that I have a little custom button here. Something else you can do is indicate what the button is called with text only and not have an icon. So I'm just going to leave this as custom for now and I'm going to click view text only. I am going to change the width of my icon to accommodate my text up here and click OK. And you can now see that I have a custom button which shows as only text. The button is blue because I picked the blue color scheme for my app. However, whatever color scheme you picked, if it was yellow buttons, your buttons would always show up as yellow. Now, the beauty of this custom button is that I have the ability to put any number of things underneath this button, if you will, at another layer of information. So for your purposes, you're going to double click on that custom button and now you can see that what you have here is another entirely blank custom screen. Virtually the same thing you have when you drop down a custom tab, but you only had to click on a button to get here. You can again execute the same types of functionalities that you just did on your custom tab. You can drop in an image and create a background image. Click OK. Change your settings. And again, how you change your settings is going to depend on how much space you need to utilize and whether or not you want it to be a completely full background image or only take up a certain portion of the background. Now you'll notice here that all you see of my image is blue. That's because the image I picked had a large amount of blue sky underneath it. So for my purposes, I didn't get the picture that I wanted here. And this can often be a trial and error process. One thing to note, is that once you have set in your background image and you've dropped some items on top of it, if for some reason you want to go back later and adjust the size of your background image, you still have the ability to do that. You can simply pull down the image and click on the edit button and as you can see you have the ability to change the sizing of your background image 
as I just did here. Now I have the whole picture in here of my boat and so forth. Again, this can be a trial and error process determining exactly the layout you want to have of your background image as well as the elements on top of it. So with the custom button, the functionalities, once you've clicked inside that button, really are the same as the tab as far as laying out the screen or page itself. I can then, if I want to, drop another custom button here and create another layer below this. Again, I can label it as I'd like, specify my icon, choose whether or not it is going to be text only, or have an icon. I'm going to click OK here. And as you can see, I could then double click on this icon and open up another whole page of information. The other thing that you can do is have multiple custom buttons on one screen. I'm going to show you an example over here in the app I've already started to build. So there are actually several custom buttons on this screen. This particular button, Featured Vendors, we'll click on it, is the beginning of what will be a set of different vendors in different categories. Now this particular button here is not a custom button. What I've dropped here is an advanced list. So my first level of information was by way of a custom button and underneath that I am now going to drop a number of advanced lists in different categories that relate to the vendors that are being featured. Going back to the home page, the news and sports button is a custom button. Clicking on that brings you down to another page of information and these buttons here are different RSS feeds. So each one of these underneath it has a feed directly to the item that it is associated with. And going back to our home screen again, the About button here is a custom button as well. Clicking on that, you can see underneath there are a number of additional buttons or elements here. The History button happens to simply have a picture and some text underneath it. When I go back, the second button Beaches. Again, same thing, a picture with some text, and this time I chose to have some of the text overlay the image. My button here about beach safety is actually an advanced list. So again, when you're using custom buttons and custom tabs, you have the ability to completely change the look, feel, and functionality of what your app does and how it is presented to your user. And that is how you implement full customizable user interface features in your mobile app.